and welcome to the Honer Harmonica Workshops. Workshop CO8, Breed Replacement. It can happen that when it's been played a lot, a reed develops a crack and breaks. It's not necessary to throw your harmonica away or install a complete new reed plate when this happens because Hona has developed a tool set, the Hona Instant Workshop set, which will enable you, the player, to replace defective reeds. Now we're gonna introduce this tool set to you the first tool you're already familiar with, it's our old friend, the reed lifting blade, uh, which is used, in fact, in almost all harmonica repair operations. The most important part of the new toolkit has to be the special pliers, the de-riveting tool. This is a pair of pliers with two different heads. The small head, which is in there at the moment, is for pressing out the old reed, and the large head is used for punching a hole in the wind saver if you wish to place a wind saver over the bolt, which is how the new reed is installed. The next tool is the reamer. This is used for enlarging the holes in reed plate and reed to a size of 1.4 millimeters so that the bolt will fit to them because the stud bolts, which the new reeds are mounted on, are of that dimension, and larger than the holes in the reed plate. The next tool is the universal holder. This is used to hold the reamer, and it's also extremely useful for putting the new stud bolt into the plate. Then we have a drill bit. This is used for deburring the holes which we have reamed out in the reed plate and in the reed. The next tool is a tap, a 1.4 millimeter tap, which is used to cut a thread in the reed plate because the bolt is screwed into the reed plate. Then we have a screwdriver, which fits the new stud bolt. And we have a special star nut holder, which is for screwing the star nut onto the stud bolt to affix the new reed. Then we have the actual nuts and bolts themselves. Uh, here we have the star nuts, very pretty little nuts, and here we have the stud bolts. And these are the tools that you need to change reeds. So in order to proceed further, you're gonna to have to take your harmonica apart, taking off the covers and also the reed plates. When you've dismantled your harmonica, the next step is to remove the wind saver over the broken reed. After removing the wind saver, the next step is to clean the glue off the reed plate with the reed lifting tool. Now we can take the de-riveting tool and remove the old reed. For this purpose, it's absolutely essential that you choose the correct bit uh, because the other one will simply ruin the reed plate. You need to choose the smaller bit for this operation because its diameter is the same as the rivet and it will press out the old rivet. And you screw it tightly in to the de-riveting tool. Now you have to position the reed plate in the de-riveting tool in the correct position to press out the old rivet. In order to do this, you have to position the rivet pad of the old reed in the recess side of the de-riveting pliers. And you press the bit of the de-riveting tool firmly against the rivet on the other side of the reed plate. And now, we have to squeeze really hard in order to press out the old rivet. Go for it, Garby. And here we have the broken reed and the old rivet. You may be wondering where the replacement reed comes from. Well, this is a complete set of reeds for a Super 64 chromatic, which you can obtain from the Hona C shop and it will be assembled for your needs in the Hona factory. So, the next step is to position the reamer in the universal holder, 
screwing it tight so that it's sitting firmly. And now you use the reamer to ream out the hole in the reed plate to the size that will fit the stud bolt. In order to do this, you don't push the reamer through the reed plate for further than half of its length. Otherwise, the hole will be too big. The next step is to cut a thread in the reed plate using the 1.4 millimeter tap. Before you start, it's absolutely essential to make sure that the tap is perpendicular to the reed plate because otherwise your thread is going to be off center. In order to do this, at first you have to exert quite considerable pressure and after turning the tap two or three times, you'll find that you don't need so much pressure and it turns freely. This means that the thread has been cut. Now it's necessary to deburr the reed plate on the opposite side to that from which you reamed it out. If one doesn't deburr the reed plate, then it won't be possible for the reed to sit absolutely flat on the plate. The next step is to mount the stud bolt in the reed plate. In order to be able to insert it accurately, it's a good idea to put it into the universal holder and screw it in the first turn or two with that. These bolts are extremely small, so you have to fiddle around a little bit to get them sitting in the holder correctly. Now we can screw the bolt into the reed plate so that it sits in the thread that we've just cut. Now you screw the stud bolt with the holder into the reed plate up until the head reaches the plate and still turning, you pull the holder off the bolt head. In order to tighten the bolt properly, you then use the screwdriver. Now the stud bolt is set in the reed plate. Now we have to put the reamer back into the universal holder because the next step is to ream out the hole in the reed. This time, instead of only putting the reamer into the hole to half of its length, we have to put it all the way in, right up to the hilt, because the hole in the reed can definitely be a bit larger than the hole in the plate as this will help us center the reed at a later point. We've cut this sequence because it takes quite a while to ream the reed out to the whole length of the reamer. You can, if you wish, ream from both sides, but then you will also need to deburr both sides. We've now reamed out the hole in the reed to the full length of the reamer. And the next step is to deburr the rivet pad. If you've reamed it from both sides, you will need to deburr it from both sides. When you are deburring, it's very important not to press too hard, otherwise you can deform the rivet pad. This also applies to deburring the reed plate. So, we now place the new reed over the stud bolt. And then we have to attach the nut. In order to mount the nut on the stud bolt, we need to first set it into the star nut spanner. And Gabby's going to show you how this is done. You pick up the nut on your fingertip and then place it into the opening on the star nut spanner. Then you have to turn it the other way up so it doesn't fall out. And you screw it on in this position. So now we screw the nut onto the stud bolt. It's a good idea to center the reed with your finger from the other side while you're doing this. And as you see, we are screwing it on from underneath so that the nut doesn't fall out of the star nut spanner. It's not possible to over tighten these nuts, so don't worry about that. You just screw them on until it sits real nice and firm. Now the new reed needs to be centered, offset, and tuned, as shown in the workshop C04, 05, and 07. 
So if you've succeeded in this endeavor, then the result should sound like this. Hallelujah. <laughs>